Sports tonight on Channel's Television. We have taken a look at badminton in Nigeria and also uh, the performance of Team Nigeria at the Ghana International Badminton Championship. I have good news for you, just in case you're just joining us. Godwin Olofua is ranked number three in Nigeria, but in Ghana, he defeated the top ranked badminton player in Africa. Francis Obi is the president of the Badminton Federation of Nigeria. He joins us now live on the program. Uh, Francis, good to have you on Sports tonight. Yeah, uh, good evening. Okay, we're hoping to have you here. Maybe after the Ghana Championship, you'll need to come sit down here and tell us more about this competition. Uh, but for Team Nigeria, what's the major objective uh, for the players representing Nigeria in Ghana? Well, the major objective is, one, to have them play an uh, international championship where they'll be able to gain a point to go up in the world ranking. And then uh, because of the closeness to the Lagos International Badminton Championship, uh, also to prepare them for the Lagos uh, event, which is a bigger one. Hmm. So just run us through, uh, we know 10 players are representing uh, the country. How did you pick these players uh, to travel to Ghana? Uh, well, you know, last year we had, so we had two national uh, championships. So um, from those two championships, we came up with a, with a ranking for the players. So basically, from the top 10, most of the times, we select that top 10 male and top 10 female players. We select the team. Like in this a team that went to Ghana, some of them that would have gone, especially the female players, some of them had exams. They couldn't go. So that's why you see in this team, we had only three women players, and uh, for the men, we went with seven. Mm. Because that's, that's the, the message I'm already getting on social media. Uh, followers of badminton, they're wondering, why are we having just three female players in Ghana? Yeah, because, um, like I said, we had uh, a few of the female players in the top uh, 10 that are in school. They are writing exams. And um, then a mix-up in the entries left about two or so. In fact, one of the girls that played in the finals in uh, Côte d'Ivoire played against Dockers. So Nigeria played against Nigeria in the, in the women's singles in Côte d'Ivoire. Mm. One of them was mistakenly not entered for Ghana. So if not, we're, we're meant to go with about six uh, women players. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, that's clear enough. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, the feet of Godwin Olofua today. Uh, Mr. President, is that an indication that if we do more, our badminton will get better? Definitely. In fact, there's no other way. There's no shortcut. We need to do more and we'll dominate Africa again. But Austin, let me share something with you quickly. In Algeria, during the All-African Seniors, this same African number one player, uh, the Paul, the guy from Mauritius, yeah, he played against Abib, a Nigerian player, in the finals, and he won 2-1. So after that game, I went to congratulate him. I shook his hand, you know, and he left. When he turned back, I told all the Nigerian players who were gathered, I told them, I said, you know what? This guy felt I've just congratulated him, but he didn't know that I did more than that. I was telling him as he was leaving my mind, I said, Enjoy it while it lasts, because very soon my boys are coming for you. <laughs> and when I said that, I, I also told them, all the players, I said, it's not just one person that will be able to beat him. I said, I'm going to line you people up. So that anywhere he meets any of you, he's down. And that is just what's beginning to happen now. So the first person has taken him. In the next competition, he meets any Nigerian player again, they will take him out. Mm. And then our people will be waiting for him just so he can prove a point. We love it, exactly. uh, uh, particularly that there are lessons in it for uh, the Badminton Federation of Nigeria. The big one, the Lagos International Classics, it's the 7th of July the 18th. Uh, what should we be expecting differently? Well, it's bigger this time around. We have uh, 22 countries coming. And we have a few countries that have never come before. Malaysia is coming. Malaysia is, uh, I mean, after China, you start talking about Malaysia and Indonesia and all that. So they are coming for the first time in this fourth edition. And then Mauritius, that is, uh, I mean, like number one in Africa right now. 
have never come for Lagos International. So this is the first time they are coming. And uh, unfortunately for them, we've already given them a, a tip of the iceberg of what, of, of what to expect when they come to Lagos in Ghana. of 25,000 US dollars. Francis, tell me, uh, the last time we talked, uh, you mentioned that you also have programs in place for the coaches. It's important we train the trainers. Where are we with that program? Well, um, a few, about two weeks ago, we did one for the umpires. Yeah, for that course we did a few weeks ago in uh, Abuja, it was the first in about 18 years. We are putting a, a, together a course for our coaches. That will be coming next month. We have the Castina National Championship open. So it's after the Castina event that we'll be putting a coaching course together. Mind you, um, we have a, a window in China to send our coaches for training on, a, on an exchange program. So we are getting, putting things together to make sure that uh, we get it right. Because like I told you, which you rightly pointed out, it, 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 it's going to be a, a complete package for us to achieve the desired result. We should not just focus on the players, but we must look at the technical department of the game. Coaches, yes. officiating officials, every aspect of the game must be covered. Sounds good. Very important. Uh, before I let you go, um, the year is gradually winding down. This is July. Uh, so run us through the programs that we should be expecting from the Federation uh, so that your followers can keep tabs with them. Well, um, funny enough, the first half of the year wasn't as busy as the second half of the year is going to be. We have the busiest part of the year from now to the end of the year. So um, we have about five national championships coming up, senior, and then we have uh, about two age grades, under 15, under 19. Then the training courses that are coming up for coaches, umpires, and then uh, we are planning for the Badminton National Festival towards the end of the year. That will have our award uh, night also coming with it. Hmm. And in all of this, you did talk to, you did let us know if we're taking badminton to the schools. Definitely, that's one of the big ones. You see, that is a major program for us. So we are, it's in the planning stage, and we want to get it right. Uh, Short old time taking badminton back to the schools. That is taking it to the grassroots. That is where we want to make it more popular. And then we want to catch them young. We want to get the players at a young age, groom them to become champions. I must say thank you so much, Francis Obi, for your time and all the best uh, as you continue to work out to develop badminton in Nigeria. Thank you. So that's it. Francis Obi is the president of the Badminton Federation of Nigeria. Tells you the story. It is what you, you sow, you reap. Uh, uh, no, no shortcut to success. You know, you must do the right things. Five national uh, championships. We're going to monitor that. Uh, we know they've done two, in Lake, one in Lagos and one in Katsina. They said five more coming up. Two age grade competitions, training for uh, coaches, the schools program also. Uh, so with all of these... The players will be busy, the coaches will be busy, media will get what to talk about, you will love it and give you some more following and support, sponsorship likely to come in if the Federation keeps doing the right things, and of course, they have the big one, July the 18th, right here in Lagos, the Badminton International Classics. This is what we want, this is what we want to talk about. We don't want to talk about uh, athletes not being able to go to uh, Kenya. Uh, on the 20s, couldn't go to Finland for the ongoing IWF on the 20 championship. Those are not good stories. And federations need to understand because uh, at the end of the year, federations should sit down and say, what did we achieve? What did we put into sports development? Very, very important. So we'll continue to monitor the progress with badminton in Nigeria.